Hi there, this is my favourite stereo system. It's an early 80s Sony component system with touch controls. And it's one of the first Sony systems to have a CD player. This is right when CDs had just been introduced and this is one of the early model units with a CD player. Now I have been looking for a long time for the matching tape deck and I have finally managed to find one. Welcome to the basement. So what I really love about this system is it's just so 80s. It's got that cool 80s aesthetic and it really leans into the whole digital revolution. We have the new CD players that have just come out and they're of course a digital format. It does away with any analog controls. Everything's digital, everything's controlled by a microprocessor and it really was a picture of the future. Now another thing I really love about this system is that Sony was really trying to think outside of the box. They had this new CD player that uh, was front loading, it had a tray loading mechanism that would slide out and you'd put the CD in and they decided to make everything else tray loading as well to match the CD player. So it has a tray loading record player and a tray loading tape deck. So when I bought the stereo it came with the amplifiers instruction manual and if we have a look on page 13, it lists all the things that you connect to it. So turntable, CD player, tuner, and it listed the tape recorder and I was always gutted that it didn't come with the tape recorder. So I'm really stoked that I've found one. So it's gonna be an awesome addition to this 80s stack. Now I just thought I'd mention, in case anyone out there has these things, I'm still looking for the graphic equalizer. The remote control would be amazing to have as well. And um, this unit also had sort of matching speakers, more in keeping with the style as well. So that's uh, still some things I need to complete the total 80s Sony system. But for now, I'm pretty happy with finding the tape deck. Let's see what we can do with it. So let's do a bit of an unboxing. The box is looking a little sad, but uh, it's certainly not new in box. And there it is. So, got some manuals with it. And I love these. These are the Sony original interconnects and they, um, they just keep everything neat and tidy. So that's cool that I got some of those with it as well. So there we have it. Let's have a closer look because this does come with some issues. It was sold as lights come on, but tray doesn't open. So we have our power button over on the side here, and this is to set with a timer. So you can have it automatically play or record. Um, and it has a wired remote that can connect into it. It also can connect to an infrared remote that's received through the tuner and then the tuner has uh, special wires that connect to all the components to be able to pass through the instructions from the remote. But uh, I don't have a remote and I'm missing some of those special leads anyway. So let's keep looking across the unit. We've got the auto reverse tape deck. Now you might be saying, well, it doesn't look like a tape deck. That's because this entire unit comes out uh, when you hit this open close button. So this is that unit and it just slides out the entire thing and your tape goes in here you've got your noise reduction controls and your tape select controls for different types of tape metal or chromium and we've got these touch controls here on the front different tape functions and we've got the actual transport functions over here again they're just touch controls which is super neat and matches everything else in the system the only analog controls on the front are the recording level and uh, and they both feel quite nice and smooth. Uh, you can see it's got Dolby B and C noise reduction and here we've got the model number stereo cassette deck TC-V7. Now looking on the back we've got this funny looking plug which has been twisted to fit a standard Australian socket but it's actually supposed to go into the back of the other components so they all get their power from the one unit so you can turn the whole system on and off with one switch. We've also got here the remote control port. Uh, I don't have the lead to connect it to the tuner and we've got our standard line in line outs that every tape deck usually has one to play, one to record. 
we've got over here a voltage select so between 240 and 110 and this is quite interesting this is to put a screw in when you're transporting it just similar to a record player I suppose to lock the transport down so it doesn't wobble around while it's being shipped uh, so you take the screw out of there and you put it in the screw keeper hole and uh, when you need it again it's there but obviously it's not there so it's long gone. Now on the bottom of the unit it's got this ISS switch I actually had to look up in the manual what that means and it is to eliminate interference when recording medium wave or long wave radio programs so that's something I haven't seen before. So what I'm going to do to start with is just plug the unit in and we can then see sort of where it's at. The seller did say it lights up um, but the tape doesn't open. So let's make sure it's off, plug it in and hit the power button and yes it's all lighting up. So that all looks pretty good but what happens when we hit the open and close button? Oh it's trying to open. Look at that, it sort of got halfway there. So I reckon it's just the, a case of a new belt. So just the four screws in the sides. The case slides to the back. And just lifts off. This thing is really quite heavy. It's a very dense machine. I haven't really wasted much space in here. So the mechanism's all on this side. We're going to need to get underneath here and just try and find where those belts are to replace and get this working. So let's take this panel off here. Okay, with the mechanism slid out, if we just slide it out, we can see over here is a toothed rail and so the mechanism I think is sliding on a cog I can see in here there is a wheel with a belt on it uh, I imagine the belt around this larger wheel is what we're going to need to replace so I am struggling to work out how to get to this belt I think this entire unit can slide right out so I'm gonna undo uh, this piece here it looks like that's a stopper it's this little rubber piece and stops it opening so I'm going to take this off and see if the whole lot will slide out okay that's that stopper off let's see if it yep just wants to keep going um, but of course it's all wired in and um, I don't think they're on a plug which is annoying Okay, so it looks like the bottom panel's removable. I'm just gonna take that off and see if we can get to all that wiring so we can disconnect it and get that tray out. Okay, this is uh, all of the wires. There's quite a few there. And they're like taped on and they feel really firm. This does not look like it's easy to take out. You know, with the uh, with the bottom off, I can actually see the belt down here and potentially can get to it. It, it doesn't actually feel that bad. It may be a little bit loose, uh, but it's not gooey. It certainly has still some spring left in it. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe I can grease up all of the mechanism and it's gonna work again. We can take this bottom panel off as well and that shows us the other end of all the wiring yeah I'm not going to undo all that there's just no way they to be fair most of them do look like they go to plugs but some of them uh, definitely look like they are soldered on okay I have been able to unhook the belt and get it out so um, still plenty of stretch on it I might clean it in case it has some grease on it and then grease everything else up and put it back together I reckon I reckon it might work and it's just gummed up so let me try that while we're in here I took this bottom cover off and we 
you can see in here um, are the drive belts for the mechanism. So if the tape playing mechanism doesn't work, it's going to be these belts here that need replacing. Yeah, I've managed to get the wheel out and you can see all the grease has kind of all gone sticky. So I'll clean all that old grease off and off all of the rails and I'll put some new fresh grease on there and that should help a lot. That's much better. Didn't want to do that before. So that's feeling really loose. Good. So what I'll do is clean all this old sticky grease off the other rails and put it back together and see what happens. Okay, everything's back together. I have greased all the runners and I'm still using the same old belt. It seems to run yeah, pretty freely, but uh, the real test will be hitting the button and seeing what happens. It doesn't quite get all the way. It needs to sort of get to there. So maybe that belt is a little bit tired. Come on. <laughs> so it's close. It uh, probably does need a new belt. So I'm going to pull the old belt off, see if I've got something that matches in size and get it back together. Okay, uh, this is the original belt and I've got one of those multi-packs you get from China. And this one is fairly close in size. So slightly smaller, which is what we want to get a bit of tension on there. So I'll hook it on and we'll see if that fixes the problem. All right, take two. I have got the new belt on. That's the, the old belt there. And let's see what happens. Ah, that's way better. So it did need a new belt as well as the new uh, grease we put on there. Yeah, that's working really nice now. So it opens all the way to the stopper. And you can hear the motor turns off once it gets there instead of keep running thinking it's still moving so now we know it's working why don't we throw a tape in and see if it actually plays anything great so i'm really stoked that mechanism's working well let's hit play yeah it's uh, it's not happy it's not turning it's not engaging Let's maybe try rewind, no, nope. and fast forward, same issue, nothing much there. I'm hoping again it's just a case of needing those belts replacing, so we'll flip it upside down and do the belts on the underneath of this transport mechanism. Now this is proving trickier than I thought. I've undone this panel here, which has to get out of the way so we can get to the other side of all of these belts, but I don't know how you get it out because there's all these wires in the way. There must be a way to change the belts. Surely they haven't built the belts in there. So I'll keep struggling with it and we'll see if we can get this piece out. Okay, I'm almost there. I've managed to get it off finally. And it's a good thing we did because there's other belts down in here. can see here there's another belt around this one here which I can replace now that I can get in there and there's our big wide belt uh, which looks like it goes around both of these I tried to get it off before taking that cover off so I've kind of lost where it goes now but I'm pretty sure it just goes around these two larger wheels uh, so I'll take that one out all right it's that one again it still feels pretty stretchy but we'll find another one it's just slightly smaller and pop it on there okay slight plot twist in the saga I got the other belts on but it still wasn't playing it would play in one direction but not the other and I have noticed that this spins quite freely and this one seems to be really jammed so as soon as it tries to engage like fast forward or to play in this direction it just stops because it can't turn this so I need to have a look at what's causing this to be so jammed and see if we can free it up so it moves like the other one I think that should get this play up working again okay I might be getting somewhere this is the uh, the cog that was really stiff I tried getting it off but there's just no way without pulling this entire mechanism apart 
So what I've been doing is just spraying a bit of uh, silicon spray and just working it backwards and forwards with this pick and I've eventually got to where it's pretty loose now. It's still not quite as loose as the other side but it's way better so I reckon this might have fixed our issue. So I'm just going to work it backwards and forwards a bit more and we'll put it back together and see if it will play a tape. Right everything's back together finally. The belts took a long time for me to sort out. The, the problem was the original belt driving the capstan was just slipping all the time and I didn't have any belts in my collection that were the right size. Everything I tried either made it play slow or slipped as well. The only belt I found that worked is much thinner than the original so I'll just show you that there so you can see the difference um, in thickness but it does seem to fit and it plays uh, with correct speed pretty much. So I have ordered a belt kit um, it's coming all the way from Canada so it's going to take a while but I've got it playing well enough to test so why don't we test it and see what it sounds like. So this might be a good time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. Not only are they a great place to get your PCBs, did you know they also do CNC machining and they do 3D printing and they can build your project for you. So they're actually a one-stop shop for you to prototype any product that you're developing or any hobby that you're making as well. So if you're interested in any kind of electronics making, why don't you head over to PCB Way. So thanks PCB Way for sponsoring the video today. Right, I've got my YouTube Tunes cassette, which should stop me getting any content matching. Let's pop it in. And one cool feature about this tape player is that it will play with the mechanism out, like open. So let's play and see how it sounds. Try it the other way. Sounds pretty good, let's change direction again. Yeah, not too bad. I can hear a slight bit of wow and flutter in there. I think the new belts should sort that out. Hopefully they arrive from Canada uh, shortly and we can put them in and get it sounding exactly the way it's supposed to. But for now, I think that's pretty close to being done. Well, I think I'm gonna enjoy the tape deck for a while. You've been in the basement. Have a great day.